What is going on my racing fan, March here at Fragbox TV. Okay, in this video I'm going to give you a look at what a day in the life of March looks like here in the store. Hang on. Today, we're gonna, a lot of people ask me how to get micro customers come in. Okay, so this customer is asking me, okay, something else that happened. Okay, so what's the song? Come to the basement. So in the basement of the store, I think they're coming up on what is this bucket on the floor. Okay. Question of the day. Or I trust this seems like a good time for so, let's see if no one gets out. That was pretty cool actually. Oh, let's just check in how many times it's happened over the Christmas. Yeah, that's what I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give you a little mini update on my mushroom journey. Okay, check this out. I want to show you this plate coral here. This is a video, right? I know you guys like when my camera records. Look how puffy it is. The customer's asking, why is it so puffy? Look at this. He's just, he could be super, super happy for one. Uh, maybe something underneath it that's kind of irritating him or bothering him. There's maybe a worm or something stuck. I've seen them bounce actually in the past. So we've had one here in the store that became like a bounce mushroom shroom. But this is kind of what goes on here a lot in the store. People come in with questions, videos, uh, call us, and then we try and diagnose. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. So one thing to keep in mind, we do not have the answer to everything. Even though sometimes it seems like we do. He could just be really happy or... Yeah, he's probably just very happy. Okay, something else that happens quite often here. Customers will come in with their water. So Dylan is not only a hair model on the side, and our frag master, the surgeon, is also very good at testing water. What are we testing for? It looks like phosphate. Uh, phosphate. Why did you bring the water in today? What's the reason for this? Just because I'm really in suffering. <laughs> You're suffering? Yeah. The corals are suffering. I mean, the corals are suffering, some of them died off, and I have no idea what is going on. So we're going to look at nitrate, phosphate, looks like he's testing alkalinity. Salinity is my number one thing I always go to first, is I want to see what the salinity is. And if you want to know which refractometer, we're using this one here. Check it out. This is the same one. This is our most popular one. Um, it's ours, and it's what we use in the store. It's what we trust all our corals to. And check this out. It comes with a very nice wooden box because if you take care of this thing it should last you um, we've had some in the store that are 10 years old so take care of it and they will last you treat them good they will treat you good so hopefully Dylan's gonna find a value that's sort of out of whack and one of the first things we do actually here in the store testing is really really important so we have this board here and this is kind of like we call it our opening duties and our closing duties. So we come in and then these little things here are signatures of people that work here. So once you've done one, you go ahead and cross it off. And look, what's the first thing we do? First thing on the list. It's right when you come in, check the salt. Is the salt 1.025? If not, you fix it. You don't really need to uh, sign, we'll mark it in red. But if it's not, we check all of them and we see what it's at. Diggs, what's the salt at? Okay, I just checked it. So all the systems are looking good, except this one, our main coral bed here, is showing a little high, 1.026. I like to keep it at 2.5. So how am I going to fix that? Let me show you. Go down to the basement. Open this. Let's see if it's haunted today. Oh my god, what is that red light? Guys, something's going on down here. This is like demonic. Come to the basement. <sighs> Scary. No, it's just a refugium light. March, you're so dumb. Why do you guys bear with me? Why, why is the refugium light over this frag tank? What is this monstrosity? So we're dealing with a little bit of this weird algae in the store. This is kind of a holding, grow out, new coral incoming fragging coloring up kind of like a mishmash sort of system and it was maybe a quarter full so i came up with this nice idea of just setting up a temporary kind of like four foot by or three foot by two foot refugium not to get sidetracked how am i going to lower the salinity in this crazy massive 16 1700 gallon monstrosity of the system here i'm going to add fresh water so we do have an ato in the system and we keep our fresh water over here in this uh i think it's an 80 gallon i don't know how big this is i think it's an 80 gallon but that's full all the time our rodi system never turns off and i have a nice big pump in the bottom of there so i'm just going to go ahead and turn it on if you're curious about our rodi system we have a i would call it custom is it custom yeah we kind of made it uh it's a nine stage so we run sediment carbon carbon of two different microns and then we run them through two different um we have 100 gallon per day membranes in here but what we do is we take our wastewater and we recycle it through Maybe I should link the BRS video because I'm not explaining it well, but it puts out a ton of water, like 200 gallons a day. From there, it goes into the DI and we hit it with a double DI. And then we actually go through a double chloramine because we do have quite high chloramine here in Toronto. This solved a lot of issues I was having with hard corals. Maybe I can link in the description the chloramine blocks that we use in there. And then we swap out everything 
every two weeks. Whether our TDS, I'm sorry if you're new to the channel, maybe I'm getting a little too technical. Um, I'm just gonna touch on this for another second. Even, we don't test the TDS. Every two weeks, without fail, we just swap all nine of them because I found that we're really busy in the store and we didn't really have enough time to go and test TDS and oh my God, now we're at two. So instead of that, I'm like, screw testing it. We go through so much water every two weeks. Let's just swap it. And um, it's actually solved a lot of issues for us here in the store. Actually, let's do it from here, from my phone. Password 6969, because I am a child. Okay. Let's go to Apex. Um, don't ask why I was searching for baby flamingos. Actually, fun fact, baby flamingos are hideous and they're not pink. So we're gonna log into our trusty Apex. If you don't know what an Apex is, this is a controller for aquariums. We control the entire store. It makes your uh, aquarium a smart aquarium and it's all hooked up in here in what we call the brain of the store. Every single plug runs right into this cabinet and is all controlled by um, yours truly here. So we go into here and there's a button that no one's allowed to touch except me. Look what it's called. Do not touch. What does that do? That basically just turns on our huge pump in here and it's gonna start pumping fresh water into our main system. Why does it say do not touch? Um, there are just some things in the store that I'm anal about and I would rather do on my own. God forbid, you know, someone turns it on and forgets it on. You've just thrown, you know, 80 gallons of fresh water into here. It's just little things like that. At least if something goes wrong, you know, it's on me. I don't, I don't, I don't ever wanna have the onus on one of the staff because I know I have ADD and then someone will call me and then I go and I run and I'm upstairs and the next thing you know I forget. So what I actually do is I stand here and I look at it and I don't look away because I've, I've done it before. So I, I literally will just stand here like this until it's ready and then turn it off. In the basement of the store we also, we have the luxury, one, of having a basement. So we get lots of storage. We can overstock items like this, you know, heaters, skimmers, pumps, but it's also really, really nice because we have the luxury of having sumps underneath. So everything comes through the floor. Um, all this piping was done by myself. I'm not a plumber, but thank goodness, none of it is leaking. And then it's just nice. It's just nice to be able to work at like this height and this level. Otherwise you'd have all this stuff. I, I don't think a lot of stores have basements. Are there any store owners watching these videos? Do you guys have a basement? I feel pretty lucky. Not only do I have the basement, it's less than a block away from my house. So I walk to work every single day. Okay, we have the answer. It was da -da -da -da, something we see very often. So he's experiencing polyp bailout on um, some of the euphilia, torches, frog spawn. So what's polyp bailout? They literally just, the entire head, the entire fleshy tentacle part pops off. It just literally lets go and you're left with a skeleton and it will float around. Almost always, nine times out of 10, when I see that, very, very common issue, this is the culprit. It gets too low. Um, he's using Red Sea Blue Salt. He used to use the black one, the Pro, which, which is the one we use here in the store. It has elevated magnesium. For me, it's still a little bit too low. Look, 1350 is what they recommend. I keep mine at 1500. I keep it really high. Look at this, actually. 1100, oh, I didn't realize. This is 1100. It's low. It's quite low, actually, I've never, I've never looked, oh no, maybe that's what they're recommending, sorry. Maybe, maybe it's higher, 1280. Anyways, he's at 1200. For me, that's too low, 1200 too low. So how are we gonna fix that? Grab some magnesium, this is our preferred one. Toss it in, and you need a lot of mag to make it move very little. So if you put in this whole container, I, it might not even be enough, like the whole bottle. And you can add a lot of mag at once without doing damage. One more issue this customer is having, he's got a dead cleaner shrimp. And he's got a hawkfish that is terrorizing the tank. And it looks just like that. Look how beautiful they are. They're really nice. You see that long nose? Oh, where'd you go? He's designed for picking off um, unsuspecting inverts. So we're gonna hook him up to date with one of these. Nios fish trap, very, very good trap. We have other ones in the store, but this is our preferred one. It's not cheap, but uh, almost always works. And it's a very cool design. Here, this is for you. Take it home, catch your fishy. Oh, no. Yeah, she says she's sorry. She's taking your play coral. I'm sorry, this is what happens. You're not at work today. Oh, it's really nice though. Very nice little golden play coral. Typically, we're not selling out of the display tanks, but uh, we're gonna make an exception in this case. This is how we do a water change here at the store. You guys have heard me talk about in other videos. So this happens, you know, 10 times a day. There's three, four gallons, three, four gallons. Just constantly losing water throughout the day. Aren't they cute? We don't see that very often. The couple that was just here, reefing couples. And they both have tanks. She actually won a Fleevil Evil here. We gave one away. And Dylan, right now, is changing receipt paper. Guys, I'm gonna record everything today. You're gonna see how clumsy he is. Come on, what is this, day one? I'm gonna show you exactly what happens here throughout the day. 
And so I've never seen anyone hang lights um, exactly how we've done it here in the store. Yeah, yeah. Exact same lights with the exact same setup. So one side with the HMS mount to an HMS rail and then to a hanging kit on one side. It's kind of like a weird hybrid Frankenstein setup, but it looks cool. You get this kind of neat floaty effect over here, unobstructed. Actually, he's, he's done it way cleaner than we have. I think we're coming up on week three now with the Radions over our SPS system, which is empty, but it won't be for long. I just want to give you a little update. I'm really impressed with the lights. Very happy with the color that I'm getting out of the Acro. The spread is crazy. The par is the distribution is really nice. I'm very impressed. My mind has changed definitely on on LED lights. Look at this. This guy is really cool. The shortcake is just absolutely perfect. That's basically textbook. That's what you want to see. Microclados over here. Some Acropora Florida. Looking really, really good. So after three weeks, I can uh, definitely, I don't know what I was thinking. Of course, they're going to be great. I'm running them throughout the whole store. It's just I've never set up a tank to grow primarily SPS or Acros using just LED. This is, I'm, I'm old school in that sense, so this is new for us. What is this bucket on the floor? Hmm, you want to know what I'm doing here? So sometimes our pumps get super dirty, covered in Coraline and just ocean life and lots of gunk. So what I do, instead of unwiring it from the apex because it's kind of a pain in the ass, I actually leave them overnight in a muriatic acid solution that's super strong. And then now today when I take it out, it's going to be crystal clean and I just kind of cycle that. I do it maybe every couple months and I'll just cycle pump by pump. We run five of them in here and we'll just throw them in the acid overnight to keep them running clean without having to pull them off the tank completely. Okay, maybe a little bit less exciting part about my day. I do a lot of the photos um, actually on our website here uh, taken by me or Dylan in the store. We kind of share these duties of doing the photos. There's a lot of corals on here. We do a lot of WYSIWYG. This is couple hundred but when we find downtime I basically sit here on the computer and we'll just start uploading new frags people have asked us for a long time what day um, are the frags updated or can I know really it's it's whenever we find the free time in the shop we are serving customers we're shipping orders and then when we find a break in between like we try and update the site as often as we can Sure. Question of the day. I'm going to ask you guys. Um, we just had a customer walk in the store, drove two hours to get here, and he says that he got into the hobby because of yours truly. So I'll just, if anyone's out there and you've started a tank because of us, it would just be, uh, be cool to hear. Just comment below. A lot of people ask me how to get rid of hair algae in a tank. This is actually one of the best tools. So you get your snails, get your tangs and your fish, but if all else fails, um, some muscle power and a good old toothbrush. Manual removal is still very effective, and that's going to be part of my job today. Always constant maintenance in the tank, constantly maintaining. I think that's why the tanks look so clean, is we're, we're on top of it and mixed in with a mild OCD that I have. It keeps, keeps the store looking good. And today we're going to give up this dog for donation by Diggs. Not actually, what we're going to do is frag some of these acans here. Someone has asked for a piece of this one and I'm feeling generous. Usually out of the display tanks, oh hello Mr. Firefish, we are not fragging stuff. If it goes in here, it's it's basically in here forever. But someone made a special, special request. So I'm going to go ahead and run it through the band. So I'll show you how that's done in a second. Okay, so this customer is asking me, is a very good question that I don't have the answer for. Another example of how we don't know everything. Okay, yeah, maybe isolated. So he's asking, how do I add a bubble tip? So bubble tips are beautiful. He's got a pair of maroon clownfish that have begun hosting a plate coral, which at some point, they might over host it, they, they kind of chunky and big and play corals don't want to be hosted. Oh, there's a sexy shrimp living in the NEM. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Okay, not to get sidetracked. Mm -hmm. How do you add anemones to an existing tank without it moving around and killing everything? It's uh, it's tricky because this they, they're they going to move if they want. Like this one right here, as you can see, is stinging the zoas right next to it. This green one is very active. He's constantly moving. Hopefully that's finally his spot. Usually we recommend adding an M first hope and then it doesn't move and you can kind of work the tank uh, around them but then you got to keep in mind they also split and they propagate themselves so even if you get lucky and it, it ends up in a nice spot and you kind of design the tank around them if he's happy and growing he's gonna start dropping babies and splitting and then um, it's difficult it's a little bit tricky so that's the answer the answer is I don't have an answer uh, you kind of toss it in and then hope for the best take them over to our trusty Bansa these are my girlfriends. I'm romantically involved with the business and these bandsaws. Especially this one. Mwah! Julianne is the best. She's great. 
Okay, done. I've fragged them up. If you're not using a bandsaw, acans can be very tricky to frag. Lots of other corals are very easy, but acans, just because the skeleton, this diamond blade makes it uh, a breeze. Here are some of the products we have downstairs that we use. Super glue. Well, I gotta go get some more, but I really like this Insta Set from BRS. We use this dip. We also use the Revive dip. And then after almost every fragging, I do a short little bath in this frag recover stuff from Brightwell. This is a new product for us. Really, really like it. And it smells really nice. I know that's kind of weird to say. You want to smell it? Here, give it a whiff. Get close to the computer. Mmm, smells lovely. It's like eucalyptus or something. I'm not sure what's in it, but I find I have much better success after fragging LPS. Um, these ones will be quite expensive frags, so. Must, must, must start a timer because knowing myself, I will forget them in there. I get way too easily distracted to operate without one of these. This seems like a good time for a coffee break. And because I have enough energy in the world, I drink decaf. Okay, and what do I do on my coffee break? Sit down and enjoy the coffee? No, that would be too easy. So typically what I do is come over here to our uh, farm out system and I'm just looking for problems, issues, adjusting, moving corals around, saying hi to the fish, feeding them, and scratching my head and wondering why this sand sifting starfish is on the glass. It's supposed to be sand sifting. I'm not sure how you accomplish that hanging out on the glass and also why my Miami hurricane is just horrendous. Bleached and then pulling back and the same thing's happening to my flamethrower chalice. Look at that, exact same thing. I don't know why they do that. This is something I haven't figured out yet. So typically I'll turn off the flow, have the coffee, hang out for like 10 minutes with the fish and just keep my eye on stuff. Move, move and, and kind of, it's just a, a good time to spend with the corals. I think the more time I spend with them, the better the tank looks, if that makes any sense. And let's see if I can find any issues today. I see at least two. It looks like a mushroom here that has let go of the plug and decided to attach onto the rack. I have an empty plug, so I don't know what happened there. I have a nephthia that is squishing some mushrooms. Let's you know what, maybe we should just fix this right now. I hope you guys are liking this weird vlog sort of style episode. Um, how do I decide what I'm gonna do throughout the day? So I live religiously by this um, to-do list that I have on my phone. So I kind of set out stuff that I want to get done in the day. And then I also have other habits like this that I'll kind of go through, answer emails. Um, I love talking to customers, and, but the corals is, is really my passion. And that's why I got into the business. I've been meaning to do a video on kind of like the history of Fragbox and how I started the company and why I started the company and how it's going and what the future is going to look like. But I want to put a little bit more time and thought into that one than the sort of um, less manicured kind of videos that we typically do. In this tank, I have three very, very great employees. Their name are Fish One, Two, and Three. Two Desjardini tanks and one Scopus. And they do a pretty good job of keeping this eight foot bed clean. I don't feed too much in here, but they do virtually algae free right now. Let's see, Dylan came to ask me a question. Are these 60 bucks each? Yeah, but I have the big one sold already. Okay. Yeah, this one is sold, unfortunately. Somebody's asking. But the other ones, yeah, you want to frag one off. Okay. Very, very nice mushrooms. Yeah, that's a nice one. I just added them to the site. When you guys saw me earlier adding photos. This is another kind of grow out, kind of holding farm mishmash section, but this is our low light tank. So we're only running two bulbs of T5 and two reef brights, and it's quite low flow. So if I gotta house some acans or maybe some zoas that are freshly fragged and I don't want them blowing off the prog, well, plug, the prog, that's not a word, or some mushrooms like there in the back, this is where we're gonna put low light, low flow. It's kind of like the hangout tank. Oh, that's what we should call it. That was pretty cool. Actually, I wish I recorded it, but I got caught up talking to the customer as he was here. But he um, came in, he just bought a house here in the area, and there was a hole in a wall where there used to be an aquarium. So he wants to put one back in, so he just priced out a beautiful custom uh, tank. And I just want to give you a little rundown of what he's going to set it up with. PG Cube Sump, Bubble Magus Protein Skimmer, Curve 5 Elite, Neptune Sky, LED System, Jabao SOW8 Pumps with a Jabao Return Pump, some live sand, some dry rock, a 200 watt heater, some salt, a refractometer from Reef Casa, yours truly, uh, the actual aquarium, 1200 bucks, that's going inside the wall, and a hanging kit, nice little bonus, 4600 bucks for on, uh, on a Saturday. I'm gonna ask him if we can record it for the channel because I know that you guys like the build videos and I like doing the build videos, so it'll be kinda cool. We might have another in-wall special to share with uh, our lovely reefing fam. And I suspect this guy went through one of the Nero's this is not how God intended starfish. Half broken, poor guy. What 
You're very lucky. You get to come to Fragbox whenever you want and buy whatever you want. What are you taking home? I'm taking home a Party Crasher Cyclastria. Party Crasher Cyclastria. And I think a Skittle Bomb too, right? Uh, we'll think. I'm thinking about it. He's, not, he's <laughs> on the <laughs> fence. He's thinking about the Party Crasher. Uh, nice. Very nice Cyclastria. These are the coral that does very well for us. So who here has the luxury of not living terribly far from the store, so he can come yeah, anytime he wants. I don't know, the uh, traffic over here is not the best, but... Oh yeah, people don't know that. I don't know where you're watching from. Our traffic here in Toronto sucks. We are on par with uh, New York, LA. It can get really bad. We have this lovely highway called the 401, and uh, it, it gets awful. This street is not, not, it's not the worst. The other part about my job here is maintenance. So I'm just kind of walking around making sure that everything's okay. So today, happen to have to change the reagent on the trident that we're running here on our farm system. So it's really easy. If you don't know what a trident is, this automatically tests calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium four times a day. But there's one little caveat. You have to change these little bottles in here. So on the computer, it tells me reagent A empty, and it's as simple as unscrewing the cap. Man, I'm getting really good at doing things with one hand while holding a camera. Usually we would use two. Oh, but uh, I'm getting good at this. Tighten this one and that's it. Boom, close the drawer. Make sure that the lines are not caught. And I gotta do that maybe, I think once a month we swap these out. This is really so clever what our customer did here. He's uh, experiencing chloramines in the water. So he's picking up a chloramine block. He has a RO buddy, four stage, and he turned it into a five stage. How do you do that? So I in just, case- I came to you guys and you got Hooked you up? Yeah. Yeah, we get these from BRS. It's these um, really easy to install single well, canisters. Super simple, yeah. Yeah, that's I very clever. I put that on the back of a board and I put that on the back. Perfect. So. Yeah, so you take your four stage RODI buddy and he's got it running as a five stage with the chloramine. That's really clever. Check this out. This is perfect scrambled egg. So a lot of customers come in. Oh, the hold store. on. So I have to make that rid of that. Down. There we go. Look how nice it is. Oh, oh okay. Just like when customers come in and show yeah. us frag turn into colony two years to get there, huh? Yeah. It and looks it, great. I bought it with 28. Even your blastos. Those are from you. Or the, the purple good. one is yeah. from you. Do you have a, a photo of the entire tank? And you one, two, three, four, five, six balls. You might be interested to know he is Ariel. using this. He's using our light over top of his 20 yeah. gallon tank. Everything looks awesome. Same light. Yeah. Oh, Dylan, what are you feeding? Frozen? Frozen? Frozen food. Yeah, we're feeding frozen in all of our systems. A little heavier now because we're trying to increase the nutrients. That's something I would have been very surprised to hear if you told old March 15 years ago that I'd be trying to increase nitrates and phosphates. I would say you are a crazy person. But it is no longer the case. We're constantly batting, battling with um, very low nutrients. We feed heavy here in the store. That conversation would have been great. The customer that just walked out was looking for snails for a freshwater tank. So that's kind of something that happens in here. Not that often, sort of often. Um, what, how often would you say, Dylan, freshwater people walk in and they don't realize we're salt? Oh, today twice. That's the second time today that it's happened. There is one snail that crosses over. It's a nerite, but uh, I don't have any to sell her or even give her. I don't see any in here at all. But I, a lot of people walk in or, you know, they don't know, actually know what a saltwater reef tank is. And they walk in and, and just enjoy and walk around the store and it's fun kind of showing them um, what's going on. We don't usually get walk-in customers that end up buying a reef tank. I would say I can count on my hand how many times it's happened over the past 10 years. Typically, you stumble in and then, oh, this is really cool. But it, it, it does happen. It's just, just not very often. Actually, I kind of have a cool story. There was someone that applied to work here that had absolutely no saltwater experience. Her name was uh, Margaret, we called her Max. And she just liked the store and applied and she had good energy and I'm like, listen, she's a, she was a nice kid. I said, if you buy a saltwater tank and you get in the hobby, you're hired. And she bought a Fluval Evo on the spot, got into the hobby, and that's it. And she was here for, I don't know, I don't know if she watches this channel. Max, how long were you here? Five, six months? But I thought that was really cool. And it showed really nice initiative. And she was a really fun part of the team for, for the time that she was here. Like I said, lots of questions answered here in the store. So this customer wants to know. Let's see what we got going on here. Is this a, where are we looking? Aptasia? That for sure is an Aptasia. Oh no, that's that. Jana or an M or a bubble tip. What are we looking at? The little feather thing? Yeah. Oh, those are feather dusters. No, not the feather dusters. This again. Yeah. That's a manjano. Yeah, yeah. That's a manjano and enemy. Take that thing out. Oh my god, is he trying to host it? He loves it. Oh, I've never he seen that. Dylan, come see this. <laughs> His clown is trying to host he the, loves it so uh, much. manjano <laughs> and enemy. I've never seen that. Oh, maybe leave it. Uh, he, lo he loves it so it's much. It's a pest it's... and they're gonna... You ever seen that? No. no. That's so cute. 
He, oh. he literally sleeps there. He loves it. I'll leave it. <laughs> or buy him a proper <laughs> nap. Gonna give you a little mini update on my mushroom garden here. Again, zoanthids. Maybe you saw the other video. Again, they're just not performing. I tried a little bit lower light. And it's weird because in other parts of the system, Zoa is great, but I guess I'm gonna keep trying. This is not the spot here, but um, with that being said, check out the mushrooms. These are kind of cool because these are red discosoma. But look at that. If you notice, if you look really closely, check out the pattern that's on them. Uh, it's kind of got this blotchy, brown, inconsistent pattern, and it also has these cool kind of dots. It's not like your typical discosoma that's, uh, well, this one isn't typical either, but usually they're smooth throughout. But I'm really happy with the way this little garden's coming along here. Well, I don't know if this was the best weekend to shoot this video because it's really quiet here in the store. So typically the weekends, we're getting into November, busy, but we're experiencing some very nice weather here in Toronto. 15 degrees Celsius for the end of October is lovely. So what happens is the store gets quiet. As soon as it's a nice weekend, very, very quiet. People really want to enjoy the last kind of uh, good weather here until we get into the negative 20s and die because this is a frozen hell of a country um, all the way through until maybe March. So I guess it's, it's quieter than normal, which is good, I guess, because I get to pick up the camera and talk to you guys. But this business is super, super seasonal. We're incredibly busy throughout the winter and then very, very quiet um, in the summer months. And I don't know if Maybe you're a business owner or if you're a store owner. I know a couple shops follow the channel. Maybe it's the same for you guys, but it's been like that here um, ever since we opened. And what is Dylan doing right now? Hmm, let's see. Dylan is setting up shipments for tomorrow. So today is Sunday and our busiest shipping day is Monday. We actually might close because we get so busy on Monday and we just start setting up all the orders um, for stuff that is going out tomorrow. So that is almost always on Sunday. Mike is here. He's our shipping manager and takes care of the shipping, but this weekend it's just me and him and we just start getting them basically ready line by line so that we can send them out the door tomorrow. I think we have 30 or 40 or orders going out so it does take up um, a large portion of the day and just some weird uh, unrelated, well it's all related, you know what, it's a mishmash of random content. I'm trying to look for new styrofoam boxes because the price of these things, we're paying $15 a box and it's, uh, it's eating us up. So we do not charge the customer for the box. I don't think anyone would pay for shipping supplies when you order something online. But these are super thick, inch and a half styrofoam boxes, just with COVID and with whatever. I guess that's just an excuse to raise prices, but um, check out how thick they are. We do really, really well with these. This is our standard box, but price has just gone loco. So I am looking for some new styrofoam boxes. Maybe someone out there has some ideas for us. Womp womp, we lost the torch coral. Why? I don't know, I'm not sure. Most of the other corals in here are doing very well. Very happy. Some nice scoldies, nice hammers, Maricora, more hammers, flower pots. But sometimes it, it just happens. It's just the way of the road, bud. This is a macro shot of Dylan's hair for all of you that want him to cut it. Look how nice it is. Okay, Reefing Fam, that is it. We're gonna wrap this one up. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like Bulldogs, if you like Dylan's hair, if you like everything reefing related, make sure to subscribe. I'm trying to do videos as often as we can. I know um, I've heard you guys say that you want the videos a day to come back and I would love to do that. I'm gonna leave you with this, which is a trade-in. Somebody dropped it off this week in massive leather coral that is going to go in a very big tank later this week. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we will see you guys back here shortly. Have a very nice day or maybe an afternoon or maybe even a morning, wherever you're watching from. Thank you very much and bye-bye.